name's Helen. Um, there's other members of staff on this evening. Um, I'm the regional development officer across the Midlands, so you probably already know me if you're in the Midlands. But um, perhaps if we just buzz around and say hello for the other members of staff who's on. Um, so Yvonne, you're first in my eye line, so we'll come to you. Good evening, everybody. I'm the new RDO covering the Northern Counties, so I've been in post eight weeks today. <laughs> hello Thanks. to everybody that I've met so far from NCAS. Lovely to see you all. Yep. Thanks, Yvonne. And next in my eye line is Vic. Yep, I'm Vic Williams from Wales. Um, I can see that we've got Colin and Bob here from Wales, so looking forward to having a chat with you later. Thanks, Vic. And next in my eye line is Gail. Hi, I'm uh, Gail Pink. I'm also part of the participation team. I'm uh, Clubs and Communities and I'm going to be Toby tonight. Thanks. Gail and we have Stephen Bork on the phone as, as well tonight. Do you want to say hello, Stephen? Hi everyone. Um, I'm Stephen Burke. Um, I'm the RDO for the Southwest. Brilliant. Okay, thanks everyone. Okay, so we have got a um, presentation just to whiz through for you, and you can use the chat box to raise any questions or queries. And then um, if I'm chatting, if any of the other members of staff want to answer, then feel free. Otherwise, I'll pick those up once the presentation is done. OK, so. What we're going to run through tonight um, is um, we have got quite a lot of information to, to let you know about and quite a lot that's new about the Start Archery Week this year that we haven't done before. So it's really great that you're here. Um, we're going to, well, we've got about six weeks to go until the beginning of um, Start Archery Week. And I don't know if you've noticed, but once a week on a Tuesday, we have been trying to share case studies from events that were run last year. So do keep an eye out for those that may be helpful to you or just help bring new ideas your way. I think we've just got a bit of background noise. If you wouldn't mind um, muting your microphone, if, if at all possible, that would really help us. Thank you. OK. So, yeah, do look, up, look out for the case studies coming round every Tuesday. And what we need to ask you to do is, if you haven't already done so, to make sure we've got your confirmed details by registering your events. We know a lot of you have filled out the expression of interest form that we opened back at Christmas time, um, but now is the time where we really need to know um, your confirmed date and times, your venue, and they're the details as well that we can populate into the map, the find an event map on the Start Archery website, where the general public will be looking for events to go to. So do make sure we've got your event details registered. If you're an Archery GB club, that's really easy to do through the club records. You look for the have a go and course registration page. If you're someone with access to your club records and you just follow that through when you're registering, do make sure you tick yes for the open active part. That's where the details pull through into the map. If you're not from an Archery GB club, we have a simple, straightforward registration form which I have emailed around. But if you don't have that, if you let me know, I can send that out to you. So we're going to uh, cover off registration. Once you are registered, then we will need to let you know how you can access free resources and give away merchandise for your event. So each of you will be emailed a discount code that you'll be able to use on a new merchandise portal. So it's really exciting. It's new for this year. We hope it will be really helpful for you to give away things to your participants on the day, but also things that you can use in promoting in, in promoting your events. So we will be emailing every event organiser that has registered an event. Also, we, we need your help in gathering more data about how the events go. And to do that, we really need your feedback. So we're going to run through what feedback we want you to collect on the day, how to register the people that come on the day, and then how to pass that back to us by the deadline of the 27th of May. So we're going to touch on that in a minute. We have 10 competition prizes available to be won because we're celebrating 10 years of events this year. Um, we have 
10 big prizes, so we're going to run through those one by one so that you can pick and choose which competitions to enter. They won't all be applicable to you, but you can pick the ones that stand out to you. We're just going to whiz through some kind of re handy reminders on how to really prepare because we've got six weeks now to get the rep preparations down and how to communicate to your members, etc. We've got things to help you do that, such as the social, the social media templates and the pre-event press release. We've got logos for you to use and they're all free to download from the website. We're also going to touch on follow up. So what happens after your event? How can you slot those people into the next opportunity to do archery or to a local club near to you if you've not got a beginner's course ready to go? And we're also going to touch on a new club management system that's about to go live and ask um, for a little bit of help testing that out before we go into breakout rooms. And the breakout rooms are an opportunity to meet other people, hopefully in your area, that um, that are running Start Archery Week events as well, so that you can kind of coordinate what you're doing or discuss things together and share ideas. And it's really good to be able to touch base with each other and also your local development officer. And as Gail mentioned a moment ago, um, if you're in the southeast, if you're in the SCAS area, Gail's going to be coordinating that group as Toby's not able to join us tonight. So registration. So as I've mentioned, for clubs, it's really easy. Please remember to register all of your events. But if you're registering a Start Archery Week event, there is actually a box to tick um, on the membership portal if you're someone with access for your club and please opt into the open active part. That's the only way that the map will be populated with your event details. So if you've done that, could you go onto the find an experience map and check that everything is appearing correctly? If you need to change anything, please get in touch with us because that's what the public will be looking for. And we wouldn't want someone to turn up at the wrong place or the wrong time or the wrong day. So if you're not an Archer GB club, there's a registration form really simple to do on, on Google. So uh, we can share that link with you. And as I mentioned earlier, for those that do register, you will be emailed a discount code to access free resources through this new merchandise online portal. And that is going to be hopefully going live next week. So um, we can uh, if you want to think about what you might like to order, and maybe speak with your treasurers or whatever decisions you need to make in your clubs, then hopefully next week we'll be ready to use it and access your new Start Archery merchandise. The discount codes need to be used by the Start Archery week, so it is for you to order things now to use in your week. For Scottish Archery GB clubs, they're going to get a uh, £100 worth of discount code to use, for Archer GB clubs elsewhere, you're going to get £50 worth of free resources. And if you're from a non Archer GB club, we're going to give you £25 worth of free resources to use on the online portal. Um, you can also buy more. You can spend money on there yourselves or top up to order a more expensive item. But um, we would ask you for all of your event details to be fed back to us in order to use those discount codes. We need your data on who attends your event, please. So just if you're not familiar with it, that's how you would go through the four steps of registering your event if you're an Archery GB club. So it's, I appreciate that would be very small on your screens. But step one is just to add a club course registration. Step two is to tell us it's a Start Archery Week event and the event address. Then there's a checklist there, sort of have you taken a, a have you done your risk assessment? How many people might you expect? And I appreciate if it's an open day, you're not going to know exactly, but a rough figure, something like 90 or 20 or whatever you're expecting. Um, tell us a little bit about the accessibility. That's really helpful for those that are looking to come to your event. And then step three in the top right corner is opt into the open active data. That's the part that's going to mean that you're on the map. And then if you do opt into that, it opens up a new screen saying, well, when are you starting and finishing? Who can come along? What ages can come along? Is there a cost? And for most Start Archery Week events, there's not a cost. We do ask you to keep it as cheap as possible or free if possible. 
but if you need to cost, uh, charge uh, a small fee, then that's fine. To, just to cover your costs, then please enter those costs there so that we can put those on the map and people know in advance. If you're not an Archery GB club, the form that we will send to you is very straightforward as well and looks a bit like uh, this on screen. So just who's running an event, where are you running it and your contact details and we can populate those details into the map for you. So how would you link your event to the national celebration? The, uh, the participants that attend your events, we would need you to ask them to all register, please. Um, the registration forms will come out so that you can print off as many as you need. We're going to make them as simple as possible um, and two to a page so that it keeps your printing down. But we would need everybody to be registered. They're going to look a little bit like the one in the top right corner, but not that's not the finalised form. Once you've got one for everybody, I'd suggest that you put a sticker on everyone that attends because you can access free stickers through the merchandise portal. And that will just show you that visi visibly that they're registered. After the event, we'd like to ask you to enter all those details onto one simple spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet, which is pictured in the bottom left corner and email that back to us. Um, within a week. So the deadline for that is the 27th of May, please. And that way you can access everyone's um, details to follow up with them as a club or a group. Um, but also we would need to know who's attended and we can offer them support after the event as well. Helen, sorry to jump in. We've got a question in the box. Ooh, okay. can, we have an, an elect can we have an electric form? We don't use paper. So the form will be emailed to you. Um, if you have capacity of using it as an electric form, then by all means, as long as we can get that feedback from you in an Excel spreadsheet afterwards, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, we did a we did an online registration last year, but some people found they did not have signal where they were holding their events, so it wasn't possible to do that again this year. But yeah, if you have a way of doing it electronically, that would be great. It also incorporates some. Um, photo and video consent. So it's quite important that everyone does that, but I appreciate some people might be doing registration differently. As long as it incorporates all those questions, that would be great. OK, so it's always good to know how your event links in and uh, fits into some the national kind of element of it. You are part of something much bigger because all of the events that happen over the Start Archery Week event will be running the same sort of registration and feedback um, and just to give you a bit of a flavour, especially if you haven't been a part before, we've introduced now over 45,000 people to archery over the last 10 years of events. And as you can see, we've had an estimated participation rate from the last few years. Um, and we also would love to know how many people sign up there and then to a beginner's course. Um, so we're aiming this year to be a, to, to go even bigger with the 10 year celebration aiming to get over 6,500 people participate and then hopefully that will translate into lots of beginners courses as well and help populate your clubs. So just to give you a look at the uh, online merchandise portal, this is some of the things that um, you're going to be able to access. It could be that you want some stickers, that you want bunting, uh, you want to order some T-shirts. It could be that you would like to get the certificate so that everyone that's taken part can walk home with a certificate saying they've started their archery journey. Uh, but that's just to give you a bit of a flavour of some of the items on there. And now we're going to run through each of the 10 competitions one by one. So um, I'm going to take myself off microphone and pass over to whoever's doing the next competition. Sorry, I think it's I think it's a bond for this one. Yeah. I'm looking like I was answering somebody's question in the chat box. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> ah, OK, so competition one, as it says there, you've got to register before the 10th of April. Um, and this is a coaching session at your club with Lloyd Brown. 
to enter into this it's just making sure that you've registered your event basically so please make sure you've entered it it'll be in a, a sweepstake basically pull the name out so that's how it's going to work moving on to the next one I think competition two is, is me. So competition two is all about community outreach and community engagement. You would need to submit your application by the, the 1st of, of May and you would win um, 50 beginner handbooks. So um, it's about community partnerships since January 2022. And so this could be uh, local uniformed organisations. You've engaged with some volunteers that are trying to do their Duke of Edinburgh. You could have done a wellbeing session for your NHS hospital. It could be schools, a mums group or home education group. Anything, basically, any community engagement. OK, thirdly, if um, your club raises money through the Archery GB partnership with Easy Fundraising, um, we would love you to think about writing in and tell us how you've raised and spent donations through Easy Fundraising. The top three that are chosen will win an additional donation of £200 each. So it's not about how much you've raised, it's about how creative you've been in raising the donations and then how you've spent the donations as well. So um, extra weighting will go to creative ways, not on the overall amount. And the deadline to email in is the 1st of May. So if you if you want to raise money before between now and the 1st of May, you can also sign up to an easy fundraising link through the Archery GB partnership that we've got with Easy Fundraising and get raising some money between now and the 1st of May, you could also enter. But if you've already been raising money, you can tell us about how you've done that. This one is about, uh, well, but, but it's for the um, archery organisations that are not our Archery GB clubs, so any any um, other outside organisations that are going to be putting on a Star Archery Week event, and it is to win uh, one of ten of the uh, arrows kits that can be used. Um, the, so all you have to do, all they would have to do for this, is to register their event by the first of May. I think this one's Yvonne as well, if that's okay. <laughs> so I was trying to answer John's thing about the certificates. Um, okay, so for this one, we're trying to make sure that we have as as much information as we can from all the clubs and to give us, oh, what was that? It's a bit of a background noise. Um, is to basically get the most creative example, as it states clearly on there, about what you do as the build up to Start Archery Week. Um, so we're trying to make sure that we prom promote this as much as possible in the Archery UK magazine. So the deadline for this will be the 22nd of May. Um, and basically, um, just come up with something really, really creative photo wise with archery theme, obviously, if that makes sense. So um, so it'll go in the magazine. That'll be great. And the deadline there, 22nd of May. OK, so for this next one, this is about you feeding back to us. So as we mentioned earlier, we really need, uh, if we can, to ask you to fill out that spreadsheet telling us who attended your event and send us your event photos afterwards. And also we will be asking you to fill out a feedback survey really quick about your experience of signing up to the week and how you received support through the week just to help us improve for next year. So if you're able to complete those three items before the 27th of May, which is the deadline for all the feedback to be back to us, um, you would be entered into a prize draw to win a pack of 50 target faces. So this is for Archer GB clubs, non Archer GB clubs, anybody and everyone that feeds back those three items before the 27th of, of May. Uh, 50 new 
target faces from the archery shop. The next one is about your participants that register on the day. So everyone needs to be registered, but they also have the option of uh, giving us their email so we can follow up and send them more information about doing archery again in the future. If they opt into that part, they will be entered into a competition to win two tickets to the Bear Grylls Adventure Centre in Birmingham to do high ropes and to do archery. So great prize, really good transport links. Hopefully that will appeal. And again, they all need to be back to us, as you know, on the spreadsheet by the 27th of May. Something you can be encouraging people with when they're doing sign up. Uh, competition eight is all about cake. And we know everyone loves cake, especially archers. So this is probably the best competition out there, I think. Um, so we're looking for the best archery themed cake um, made by one of your participants or by a member of your club. Um, if you get them submitted by the 27th of May, you are in a chance to win, funnily enough, another cake. Um, so get out there, get baking, start encouraging some creative cakes for us all. Yeah, if anyone can make that one on screen with purple and green, that'd be amazing. But you don't have to. <laughs> Number nine is the uh, event photography and video competition. Um, this is for a paid advert on Facebook for your club. And the themes we want to see represented in your uh, photographs or videos that you send in is teamwork makes the dream work for the love of archery or a video capturing the atmosphere of the day. So um, whatever whatever you think best depicts those those three themes would be good. And the deadline again is 27th of May. And the number 10 competition to keep with our 10 theme is um, a volunteer that does over 10,000 steps during a Start Archery Week event, even if it is one step over. Um, you'll be entered into a free prize draw to win a Viking Wasp metal detector donated by the archery shop. And the closing date is the 27th of May. Thanks everyone, that's great. So um, I ran a quick check as of this morning as to which events are registered so far. So if you're not sure if your event is registered, you can go to the map and enter Start Archery Week event in your area and have a look. And that's on the Start Archery Find an Experience page. Um, but I think I've pulled them all off and they should be on screen now. Now they're very, they may be very small on your screen. Um, but the easiest way to check is if you're a club administrator, you can go and have a look if you're from a club or if you're not. The only exception to that will be Banwell Scouts because I haven't loaded it onto the map just yet, but I have your registration. So thank you, John. That's absolutely fine. Um, and I think that we need to pick up a question from you as well. Was that about? Um, electronic versions of the certificate? Yeah, no problem. We can get those to you um consent to share that yeah the the consent georgia um is on the registration form so they will tick the box if they're happy to share with archery db so you will know which ones to put on your spreadsheet um john uh yeah i appreciate some of the some of the prizes are more towards a club or someone that does regular regular archery um apologies for that yeah, cake would be great. Do make sure that you enter that one. Um, the wheelie bin is is really helpful in terms of when you go out and about doing events, the wheelie bin arch, arch arrows kit. So that we thought would be a good um, incentive to take out and about. And perhaps if you're running events elsewhere, um, but I appreciate some of those are not always going to be applicable to non archery GB clubs. Um, Stephen may be able to pick up with you some extra support we might be able to offer. 
Um, Claire, okay, I'll I'll check that tomorrow, Claire. I don't know if it was during the day that you registered it today. I pulled off the data this morning. So if you've registered it, registered it since then, oh, I need to get my teeth in. It won't be shown on the map just yet, but it will appear when it does the next update. I registered it quite a while ago. I didn't. It's not today. I've done it quite a while back. Okay, right. I would check that it's opted into the open active part then, but I can have a look at that tomorrow and come back to you if there's any queries there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Mandy. First of all, I don't have access to the chat box, so I can't see what's going on in there. But the other one is, do we get the wheelie bin? For the, for the wheelie archery, do, is the wheelie bin included? Because I'm just thinking, how do I get that in my car? <laughs> Yeah, no, the wheelie bin isn't included, but you get the sticker to put on the wheelie bin. Which I know, I just thought I'd just poke it oh. a little bit. <laughs> OK, yeah, no, in a wheelie bin arrows kit, uh, the sticker provided could be stuck on anything. So you could put it on something else if that's more suitable. Yeah, OK. OK, so I'm going to hand over to Yvonne. Thanks very much. OK, thanks, Helen. OK, so we've put together a quick checklist for you just to run through um, some ideas, basically, um, of what you can do as a preparation for your event. So making sure that you've registered it. Have you opted into Open Active? Um, this is crucial because if you haven't opted into Open Active, you won't be seen on the map. Um, so if anybody's on the Start Archery website and is looking for um, an activity and you're not actually on the map, they won't be able to find you. So please make sure you do click yes if you want to be visual. Um, marketing, as um, Helen's already mentioned, we do have um, a number of article templates that you can use. So please do use those there, you know, for you to contact your local press if you wish or for social media also. Um, some feedback for some clubs who have run events previously is they found that a lot of previous members have come back to the events who haven't been members pre um, recently, if that makes sense. So prior to COVID and they've dropped off. Um, so make sure when you're communicating all of your various bits and pieces that you think about everybody that's been a member previously and include your current members because they may also share that with other people that they know that may be interested that they've been talking to you know friends about the club as an example um, registration as Helen's already said we will have this registration form um, the 27th of May is the deadline and please do complete the organizer survey and Obviously, GDPR is a big thing in our lives these days, so making sure that you store that information in compliance with the GB GDPR regulations. Um, so please be mindful of that. And also, if you are taking photos and if they've objected to that, make sure that you're able to identify that person so you don't get them in a picture and then promote it all online, if that makes sense, because they, you know, they've asked the, for their face not to be in a picture. So please do bear that in mind as well. Um, we have had a couple of case studies um, that have gone online recently um, about how to manage queues of people wanting to have a go. So just have a look at those if you're struggling with the queues. If that makes sense, because I know some people have had juggling activities, others have had demos, um, others have had raffle tickets, um, you know, to pull people forward. So, you know, if, you, if you're struggling around the queuing side of things, please have a look at a couple of the case studies that are on our website um, to give some ideas. Um, and do you have enough volunteers? is the next big one. Um, you need to think about your workforce. Have you got them for the entrance, the demos, um, have a go area? Have you got your young volunteers? So if you've got young ambassadors in your club, you know, are they engaged? Are they willing to take part? Um, you know, if you've got under 25s who are you know, doing some sort of Duke of Edinburgh award or anything along those lines and needs, you know, to, to have things signed off to be able to achieve a certain badge, then, you know, engage those as well. Um, first aid. Have you got somebody who's a qualified first aider on the site just as a practical um, notion, just in case anything you know, small happens or major, uh, just to be on the safe side? Um, I've already mentioned ph photography and the big thing is refreshments and snacks. I'm hearing this an awful lot, having a very big cake table with lots of tea and coffee on there and juice for everybody. Um, and also for those that have undertaken it, to have somebody around so that they can go and chat to us you know, the individuals that are finished just to talk to them about the club, make sure that they're aware of any beginner courses coming up or if you've got any ha other have a go sessions coming up just so that people are engaged as they finish their start out tree experience. Good move on for me, Helen, please. Thank you. Um, the other things to think about as well as signage. So if you're 
facility is out of the way from the car park, do people, will people be able to find it easily? So you could use Bunting as an example, or you could stick your signage um, in places to direct people towards it from the main roads or from the car park. And, you know, also, is it obvious where the toilets are? Um, absolutely crucial for anybody. Um, but, you know, will they know where the toilets are and can they access those quite easily? Um, are you able to cater for people with a disability? Um, you know, you may have wheelchair users, you may have people um, with visual impairments or hearing impairments. So please, you know, just think about that as well. If you know, if you've got somebody with a disability that comes along, are you able to cater for those? Um, making sure your risk assessment is up to date. Um, every club should be reviewing their risk assessments on a yearly basis anyway, but then also make sure if anything happens outside of your risk assessment to do a dynamic risk assessment. Um, so that's just something that you think about on the feet. You just complete a quick dynamic risk assessment so you can add that to the master one uh, when you review that in a couple of months time. Um, have you checked the equipment? Do you need anything additional? Um, you know, are you having people register in advance? So do you know if they register in advance, you know, have you got enough bows and arrow, you know, all those bits and pieces, you've got enough bosses, all that kind of stuff. Um, so making sure you have that. Um, shelter, good old blighty, if we, <laughs> it may be raining or it may be pure beautiful sunshine, we never know. So it's just thinking about the rain cover or the sun cover um, for the day for any of the participants. Um, Possible additional activities are tombolas and raffles um, as a bit of a fundraiser for the club as well. Um, think about those extra little bits on the side that can help you guys fundraise that little bit more. Um, and before people leave, the crucial bit is making sure that you give them some details before they leave the building around beginners courses or just get their contact details so you can follow up with them. So you can get feedback from them about their day and also then hopefully they'll join on a beginners course or have a go. Um, so these are just a couple of ideas just for you guys as a bit of a checklist. Um, I hope those are useful. Helen, back to you. Any questions? Thank you, Yvonne. Yeah, great. Is there, are there any questions? That's great. So we will go on. Over uh, to I've Steve. Got one on photography, if I may. Um, people want to photograph their little Johnny uh, taking part. Are we allowed to um, allow them to take for photographs because it may involve other people within the shot? Are you talking about the parents taking photos? Yeah, and anybody yeah. else in the field as well. Okay, you will, depending on how the registration process, you'll need to make sure that whoever's there, they've complied with the, you know, the photo consent. So you may have to stipulate to the parents that they can only take photo of their children because you may have people on the either side who may not want their photos taken. Yeah, yeah so you exactly. may need to think about that is checking how many people have objected. You may have nobody that's objected, so that's fine. They can take photos. But if somebody has objected, you need to bear that in mind and then ask the parent to just photograph their child in that specific area. OK, yeah. thank you. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. Um, if it's just going to be their, their one child, which quite often it will be because it'll be one to one coaching on the line, then um, then that should be fine. But yeah, as Yvonne said, just it's a good question to be mindful of who else is in shop. OK, so follow up over to Stephen. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Um, so we've talked a lot about lead up to the event and the actual event. Um, now we talk about after the event and what we can do uh, to support the people participating. Um, so we need to make sure we have beginners courses available to our participants. A um, bit of feedback from last year was that some clubs didn't have beginners courses for up to six months after it. they had hadn't had to have a go. So people that participated weren't too keen on hanging around or waiting that long for a course. Um, so ideally, if you've got a vacant course that's free, keep it empty um, for people that may potentially sign up to it. If not, keep a couple of spaces open um, for any course that you've got upcoming. If you don't have any courses, just check around your local clubs, clubs that might be nearby that may have spaces available. Um, see if they've got anything available to direct people to. Um, try and work together. Obviously, we're all in for archery. We're not in it just for ourselves. It's all about getting people into archery. So the more we can get into, whether it's another club or to your own club, it's still better for us together. And also, please don't forget to submit your participation statistics by the 27th of May um, and also enter any um, competition photos that you're entering also by the 27th of May. 
and your organizer survey, which will all be sent out to you. I just see John's question there about knowing about any beginners courses that might be available. Um, I'll speak to you about that, John, when we go into our breakout room. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, part of the reason why we wanted to uh, include a breakout room was so that you can liaise together and you can plan together and support each other's beginners courses if you've got them or taster sessions, whatever you've got coming up so that you can discuss that, um, but also you can share ideas. So that's great. So um, we are, if you're an Archery GB club, this summer there'll be a new club management system, which will be like a bolt on to your current membership system that will allow you to do additional things such as register beginners courses online that will allow people to actually buy their place online. Um, we want to improve the ease through which people can buy a beginners course place. You can order a, a holiday online, you can buy a pizza, but it's sometimes difficult to pay for a place on a beginners course. Some clubs already have this, of course, uh, we're aware of that. Um, but if you don't, then the club management system will provide that for you and also will provide a web presence for you. So it will give you like a mini website um, for you to promote your club. Um, we would love to ask for your help. So if you are someone that would be happy to test this out by entering your live events on the new club management system this summer, um, we would love to uh, know. We would love to hear from you, basically. So uh, I think you all have my email address. So probably the easiest way to ask you to, to let us know would be to ask you to email me um, and to take part that way. Um, we will be able to share more details with you over the summer. So we're going to go to breakout rooms now. We have had a bit of a change around. So from what it says on screen, where it reads Toby and um, Gail will now take the Southern Counties group and we will um, run the East and the West Midlands together. And you will stay in the main room with myself whilst the other groups open up. Um, I don't believe we've got anyone from Scotland or Northern Ireland tonight. So Vic has got the Welsh group for herself. So that would be great. Um, if I don't know what room to put you in, if you just stay put, if you don't disappear in a minute, just stay put and then I'll come to you and ask you whereabouts you are and put you in the right room. But otherwise, we'd love to ask you in your rooms, other than just to chat to each other, to answer these three questions. And we will have an opportunity afterwards to feed back what you thought. Um, what has worked well in the past? How could you support each other, e.g. in follow up? And what would you value from us in terms of support from us as um, development officers? So what has worked well in the past if you've done these events before? And you may not have, in which case just soak in from everyone else what they say. Um, how could you support each other? And what would you value from us in terms of support from Archery GB? And it'd be really interesting to hear that feedback. So if you're running a group, if you're um, a development officer, then if you could make some notes and feedback when we come back together, that would be fantastic. Trevor, yes, we will be sending out the slides to you all. And we have also recorded this evening, so we can send that round to those that weren't able to join us live. Um, and we will be needing to touch base with every club that signed up to share this information with them. So we'll be doing that one to one. OK, so um, we have probably let's give ourselves a good a good sort of 20 minutes in the rooms, I think, uh, so that we can properly hear from everybody. So you shouldn't need to do anything in the minute. You should be moved into your rooms. Um, if you are in the wrong room, then there should be a way to message me, I think, and I'll hoik you back out and put you in the right room. But we'll begin the rooms now So bear with me one second. Thank you, everybody. And we'll just go through the rooms and take a little bit of feedback. Um, and first of all, I know that some of the rooms were very small, but um, feel free to be uh, short in your feedback if you wish. Um, we'll go to Vic first. How did you get on, Vic? Well, we had a little bit of diff difficulty because uh, Colin had no vision and Bob had no sound. So 
They're yeah, like three wise monkeys. So, so Bob was holding up um, written words for me to read to, <laughs> to go in. So the conversation was a little bit disjointed. However, they've both got events planned on the 21st and 22nd of May. They're, these two clubs are actually only um, about 16, 17 miles apart. So they're planning on um, doing a little bit of work together, perhaps sharing um, the volunteers and the uh, maybe some equipment as well, if needs be. Um, Brilliant. So they're basically going to be, you know, open house, have a go type events. And um, where necessary, both clubs will pick up the beginners um, depending on who's you know where who, who comes along and where they're closest to in terms of then doing a beginners course the both clubs have held um events previously so they you know they they, they know what they're doing mm -hmm. <laughs> um we talked about um media interest um i think um well, i think we we all understand that sometimes it's difficult to get people there from tv local radio stations that sort of thing on the day because they may promise to come but then other things happen and they don't in the end so um but looking at maybe internet radio stations and uh, other aspects of promoting the the events yeah yeah and then of course planning in a beginners course to follow up with the people that have been along afterwards so yeah it's all it's, it's all good Thank you. Yeah, we were um, we will be working again with um, the PR agency White Tiger. So to be able to secure those sort of bigger media opportunities, hopefully. So that's another really important reason to get your events registered so that then we can try and look for those opportunities in your local areas. So thank you, Vic and the Welsh group. So next we'll go over to Yvonne um, just to get a little bit of feedback from your group. What we what did you think to those three questions? So NCAS, we had um, Chrissy from Rutland join us as an honorary NCAS member this evening, and she will be joining us for future things by the sound of it. So you're very <laughs> welcome, Chrissy, as we said that. Was that a no? <laughs> you can't have Chrissy. We're keeping her in the Midlands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so we have Preston Grasshoppers have never run a Start Archery Week before, so it was great having the other clubs on and sharing what's worked for them and you know what they do and giving different living examples, if that makes sense. So there was a lot of conversation around that, which was fab. Um, and also, you know, how many arrows people were allowed them to shoot because I was concerned from pressing about how long a queue could be, you know, how long are you letting them shoot for? So all those practical kind of questions were great. Then Di offered that um, they could go and actually visit Pendles the week prior so they could actually see a Start Archery Week in session, which was amazing. So thanks again for that, Di. Um, I know the, you know the Preston guys will really appreciate that. Um, so as a follow up, we um, all discussed coming back together three weeks afterwards to actually discuss you know, it moving forward, if that makes sense, or what worked for them, what they'd like to see differently, all that kind of stuff. So that's something as a, an NCAS group with Chrissy as our honorary member, um, we will do. <laughs> Not winding you up at all with that, Helen. Um, and the value was um, for moving forward is meeting with the other clubs. So as I mentioned to the guys in the rooms that I'm already meeting on a county by county basis with the club. So it's just making sure that's a bit more visual for those clubs that haven't attended that. So that's something that, you know, the clubs would value more is talking to other clubs, if that makes sense. So that's um, something we're doing in NCAS. Um, and then we had a really good discussion about after Start Archery Week, what people found within their clubs, you know, for taster sessions and the beginner courses as well and giving examples around that. So we covered a whole load of stuff. It was really, really good. Great. Good. Sounds really good. Thank you very much. Um, and next up, we have Gail and the group from the southeast. Uh, was, yeah, go ahead, Gail. I, there was five of us in in our group, so I'm not sure if we, uh, yeah, that was you'd had a few stragglers or or, or not. Um, sort of good practice. What worked well? Um, Pre-booking. And um, yeah, Louise's club sort of did more of a, a, a taster session. Um, so they sort of booked in um, three 45 minute slots and they had 60 people. Uh, Facebook advertising seems to be a really good way to uh, promote the event. Um, 
Claire is running a, a new first time and so um, she's got lots of people on a waiting list for a beginner's course so she's also going to invite them down to the Start Archery Week as well so it's nice for them to feel sort of settled, maybe an opportunity to recruit some volunteers as, as well. Um, Louise gave us some good feedback about how many volunteers she might need to help run the event. So she sort of had six people teaching, one was safety, uh, refreshments, registration table, and they had a few people doing some demonstrations as, as well. Um, Trevor used the uh, event to sort of uh, raise some money for um, a local charity as well as helping with club funds through selling food and things. And uh, Claire's also got an offer of some crafts. She's going to have a table for Great. craft. And Paul suggested that was a good way to try and promote the event as well, sort of through the, the craft community. Fantastic. Sounds really good. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, and over to Stephen. I appreciate it. This is a very small group. Yes, thank Stephen. you, Owen. Yeah, um, Stephen and I had a good conversation. <laughs> it was just me and him. So. Um, we talked about a few things, John's with the scouts up in Western Supermare. Um, so it was more about the connection he can build them with clubs in the area, because um, currently there isn't a connection. Um, so we're trying to work out where we go from them doing a have a go session to then where can they get onto a beginner's course from there. Um, currently there's nothing local, um, but we can work on that and lead them in the right direction. Um, some of the good things John said is they do an online booking system so they know how many people are coming, they know when people are coming and they can do a lot of crowd control and work out that way and make things a lot easier. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then we went to a lot of discussion about AGB and how we can work with the relationship with the Scouts, which is irrelevant to Start Archery Week. <laughs> but a good conversation. Yeah, good, good. Thank you. Yeah. And, um, and then I had the pleasure of the Midlands group plus a few guests which was lovely um, and it was you're very welcome to join in the Midlands chat but um, I think the the strong th the strong points that came through to me were there were various different approaches to your Start Archery Week events and they're all great and they're all going to work differently and you could be in a large group a uh, large club you could be not at a club you could be at a small club you could be at a club that owns your own venue and can run all day or you could have a one hour event they're all welcome in the Start Archery Week events um, you do need slightly different approaches to them all. And um, so it's just really important to pull your planning teams together. And people were talking about the difficulty of recruiting volunteers, which we appreciate. And that's why we ran this webinar now that you have got six weeks to be able to ask a few people to help you along, even if it's afterwards. Can you come and help pack down? Um, they'll be fresh to come and help pack down. Can you help me fill out this the spreadsheet? Can you help with the follow up, even if they couldn't be there on the day? Um, so uh, thanks, John. Thanks for joining. Take care. Um, lots of good points were made. Lynn made a really good point about how important it is to share lots of information about the club on the day. So you could have a volunteer dedicated to speaking to people about your club. I do know a club that sets up a TV and has a rolling information screen about their club and it shows international archers, um, a little bit of information about the club, the highlights of their club. If you've got power, you could do that. If you haven't, you could do it in a different way. Leaflets, you could have a person talking to people. There's always a way of sharing information about the club. But really good points made about follow up as well. Um, and if you have a look on the map, even if they're not here tonight, there might be a club in your area that's running a Start Archery Week event that you might want to link up with. And just check, have they got a beginner's course coming up or do they want to point to yours? See if you can work together a little bit uh, going forward. Do use those social media templates as well that we pointed to. Um, lots of you mentioned those tonight as well. If you're wanting to chat, a couple of questions came up in our group about how many events are registered. If you wanted to check any of that with me, then do. If you've got access to your club portal, you'll be able to see them on there as well. I don't think that you can change. <coughs> so just let us know if we need to change or delete any of your events or yeah, just let us know if you're struggling with that at all. We'll go to your um, development officer and we can all help. Um, OK, was there any other points that people wanted to come back on or questions to ask from tonight? Quickly, Helen, it's Keith. Uh... Yeah. Just again to say thank you. And when you go for publicity, do you know that Bowman of Backworth have been on an episode of Geordie Shaw? So I did. There. 
<laughs> yeah, fantastic. Yeah, publicity anyway. is so important, isn't it? I know Keith and his club do a lot in their local area, um, even to the point of putting things in cars, don't you, Keith? We get the word out there. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, posters uh, everywhere. Hos hospitals, dentists, doctors, anywhere. Uh, yeah. here, here's, a, here's a quick tip for people if they want to. Uh, we take the, I mean, okay, we've been getting the e-zines at the minute, but once we start getting the ordinary magazine, when my lads have finished with them and lasses, uh, they bring them to the club and we put one of those uh, document patches on the front with the tri archery and all our details, and they're taken out and left in places, as we said, like surgeries and what have you. So people actually get something to pick up look through the archery, and there's all our details on the front. So, no bother. Anyway, I must away. Thank you very much. Thank you, people. Have fun. Thank you, Keith. All the best with your event. Um, yeah, Thanks. we just got a question in the chat there as well about how to access the merchandise portal. Once your event is registered, I will be sending out access codes, the discount codes uh, to clubs to use the portal. The portal will open next week. So, Expect an email in the next week from me to give you your discount code. Any other questions or comments from our DOs or? Uh, I'm going to stop the um, recording now. <laughs>